Hi everyone and welcome to Traveling Miss Knits. My name is Pia and I am, of course, so very happy that you're joining me here today for a little chat about yarn and knitting. Today I am coming to you from Mallorca. I think you can see just a little bit of the beautiful island reflected in the windows behind me. My husband Peter had to go here for some work, so I decided to tag along. Of course, since we're only here for, uh, what, five, six days, I didn't bring a ton of knitting, but the things that I have to show are some things that I am really excited about. So first of all, I want to show you what I am wearing today, which is a new version of my Christmas Day cast on. If you watched the last episode, you will have seen me cast this one on. Uh, I finished it and I am really loving it. I'm just going to try to stand up so that you can get a better look at it. So here she is, my second version of the Christmas Day cast on for 2023. This version, as you can see, I went for a short sleeve version. It is a really light material. The only yarn that I had available was some Holst Super Soft, which is a light fingering weight. The pattern is written for a sport weight, but I did what I always do when I want to uh, change out the yarns for a pattern. I made a swatch. I saw that I, in this case, had 23 stitches to 10 centimeters. Then I decided how much positive ease I wanted. I did the math to figure out how many stitches I would need on the body. And then I went into the pattern to see which size would give me the amount of stitches that I would need. That meant that I had to go up two sizes from the original sweater I made, but it turned out beautifully. I have a sweater that fits me just like I hoped it would fit. So I am very, very pleased with this one. This is the perfect transitional piece because there is some warmth to it, but not too much. And the short sleeves makes it very, very useful in these spring months. I made some changes to this pattern during the test phase. As I started to wear my own sweater more, I could tell that it had a tendency to creep up and, and like make this fold here uh, under the neckline. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. The fold that sometimes will appear uh, on uh, especially sweaters actually with uh, a round yoke, but also sometimes on raglans. This is a compound raglan, by the way, uh, where you start by just working increases on the body and then later on both body and sleeves. Anyway, my sweater started doing that and a few of the testers also experienced that it happened to them. So I went back and uh, I changed the way that the short rows are executed on the sweater. And then I, of course, wanted to knit a new version and it works perfectly. There's also been testers who uh, knit the new version and this one actually seems to have hit the sweet spot where you still have the look of a uh, tight fitting, uh, high neckline, but not the fold here. So the pattern is almost ready to be published. I am going to publish it on April 1st uh, in, in the preparations to our spring knitathon on April 6th. I'm actually going to publish three patterns in the week uh, before the knitathon and make sure to have a nice knitathon sale in that week so that anyone who's interested can cast on for some of the new and shiny. It's going to be this sweater. It's also going to be my vesty thing, the 
t-shirt, sweater, vest that I started working on last fall and then have been going over again and again to, to try to add some new details and fix some problems in the construction. Now I really think I nailed it, just in all modesty. <laughs> I'm also going to publish my Arabian Night Shawl, which is a huge, long, rounded shawl knit in uh, fingering weight yak and silk and with a border with some really interesting assigned pooling. I am going to put the information about the three patterns in my show notes below, just in case you want to know more about them. Maybe you want to go shop your own yarn collection or I'm going to put all the information that you need, sizes, needles, yardage and all the good stuff is going to be in the description box below. And again, the patterns are going to come out on April 1st. Obviously, a lot of my knitting time this past week has been dedicated to finishing this sweater. I really wanted to wear it on this trip, so I am happy that I did. I'm happy I pulled through. Also, it is a relatively easy knit. I have also worked on three other projects, and I think I'll start with the one that I didn't bring. The one that it didn't make sense to bring on a shorter trip because I cannot work on it for extended periods of time. It is, of course, my Look at My Holes by James and Watts that I am knitting for my granddaughter. I am knitting it in some drop spell, which I also used for the one that I made for myself. It's a lovely yarn, a cotton linen blend, so it's very comfortable in the heat but it is hard on my elbow. And after I complained about my elbow on the last episode, I have gotten some wonderful comments with some advice for knitting pain and elbow pain specifically. I thought I would just share it here just in case anyone else is having the same problem. So one of you told me to Google how to floss a cervical nerve root. And I am also going to put this in the description box below, just in case you can't understand what I'm saying, if I'm pronouncing it wrong. or So everything is going to be in the description box below. But to also Google how to stretch TOS. So that will give you a series of stretches that you can perform multiple times a day. And I can attest, it does help. I still am being very careful when I'm knitting on uh, the look at my holes. I am taking it slow, only going for maybe half an hour a day and then resting for 23 and a half hour. And as I said, I didn't bring it here. I'm almost done with the body. So there's not a lot of work left on it. It'll be fine. I will be able to finish it before Isabella's birthday, even if it is left in Italy for now. The other thing that I have been working on is something that I have been itching to start. It is, of course, the crochet dress, the better world dress that I have been talking about for weeks. And I have been talking about how I wasn't able to get a crochet hook. Now, just before we left Italy, I decided to go ahead and start the dress using the crochet hook four millimeter that I had in my Lantern Moon set. The pattern does recommend a smaller needle, but she also says to make sure that the, your tension is not too tight because you want a heavy flowy dress. So I decided to just go ahead and see how it would look if I used a needle size four millimeter. And I'm gonna show you now. It is in this wonderful little project bag. I really love 
this uh, style and the size of project bag. These are from, knit from Knitwear by Maki. She sells her bags on Instagram and I love them. And I especially love this little one because it does hold a little more than a normal sock bag does, but it's not huge. But let me show you where I'm at. So let me show you the right side. How about that? Wouldn't that be fun? Let's see if I can find the right side. Here we go. So this is where we're at with the dress. And I actually think it looks really good. I mean, I can see that it's, it's loose, but I think it looks pretty. I think I'm going to get the flowy, drapey look. And it's definitely a dress that I would wear something underneath anyway. So what I am working on here, and again, let me show the right side. This is the yoke. You can then uh, later, at any point actually, now you can start working the collar, but for the collar, I wanna get a smaller needle so that I'm sure that the collar will um, be tight enough that the dress is not gonna slip over my shoulders. But this is where I'm at and it's, it is seriously so much fun. It's, it's not difficult at all. Now, if you know how to make the basic crochet stitches, you can go ahead and make this dress. This is a lot of crochet. It's many hours for me. I know a uh, seasoned crocheter could whip this up in no time. I cannot. I'm, I'm struggling when I'm crocheting, but I'm having so much fun. And the pattern is so well written. There is uh, a set of written instructions. And then there is another PDF where everything is charted. And I really enjoy looking at the chart just to get an overview of what am I going to do in this round. And then I'm going to go to the written instruction to see how to get started on this. So yeah, it is working out beautifully. I am, um, this, this is unput downable. <laughs> I have been spending a lot of time on this, but I am enjoying every second of it. And um, in a few days, we're gonna go to Palma, uh, Palma de Mallorca, which is a teeny tiny big city. So I know that there are three or four local yarn stores there. So I think I'm going to be able to get a crochet hook. And I think I'm going to go for a three millimeter just to make sure that it again tightens up when I'm going to start crocheting the collar. And I want to put in the collar. I really want to be able to try this on as I go. But yeah, uh, I cannot say enough good things about this. This is such an interesting pattern to work and I love the look of the dress. In this pattern, the designer asks that instead of paying her for uh, the pattern, she would rather have us pay it forward uh, to donate to a charity of our own choosing. I, of course, went ahead and did so. I donated to our local shelter, animal shelter, because it's a beautiful place. Um, yeah, we have, we have actually gotten dogs from there. We've only once in our life have we went out and bought a puppy. We've always rescued dogs and cats for that matter. So it made sense for me to donate to the local shelter. And yeah, I really love the idea. I think it's so beautiful and so generous of her. This pattern must have taken so much work to write everything up. And I love the way that, that she does the sizing where you actually 
work uh, much of the yolk uh, the same way in all the sizes. And then when you get to the sleeve separation, you then decide how much width you need around your chest. So yeah, I really recommend that you uh, check out that pattern. Just if you're curious, go ahead, take a look. It is a beautiful pattern. I am using the uh, N cotton from Circolo. I use this cotton when I crochet, uh, when I knit my Helix halter last summer, and I really like this cotton. It is, it is a high twist cotton. It's very easy to work with because of the high twist. There is no splitting at all. I think it holds up really nice. My halter has been washed quite a few times the past year and it's still really nice. So um, this yarn, I don't know that it's available in Europe. I got this in, in the US, I got it off Amazon and it's a really budget friendly yarn, but you could use any kind of fingering weight cotton for the dress. I did bring another whip besides the dress because working on the dress requires me to pay full attention to what I'm doing. I cannot carry on a conversation or, yeah, I can't do anything besides crocheting when I'm crocheting. So I decided to also bring uh, the blanket that I am currently working on and it's just this, the, the Mini Max blanket. So I decided to just pop that in the bag as well. So I have something for when we're hanging out, sitting and chatting. I have something that I can just pick up and work a couple of rows and put it down again. I, I cannot do that with the dress. I am not very good at crochet, but I do enjoy it a lot, especially after my elbow is getting better. I'm really grateful for this community that we have because the elbow problem actually kept me from crochet. And it's been through all of the comments and the conversations that I've had with viewers of this podcast that I have gradually arrived at a place where I'm able to crochet again. So thank you so much for that. I really Truly appreciate your time and your concern. Thank you so, so much. There was one other tip in the comment section from previous week's episode. That is to go and watch Fruity Knitting episode 31. They interviewed the author of the book Knitting Comfortably and I can really recommend that you go back and watch that episode. It's always wonderful to watch Fruity Knitting, but in this episode you get so much knowledge about how to actually take care of your body while knitting and crocheting. And I will say, as I was watching that episode, other videos also started to appear in the, in the sidebar on YouTube. So I was watching an episode of TL Yarn Craft um, I think it was actually about how to crochet faster, but she did also go into everything about posture, lowering your, your work so you don't sit and hold it up here and sitting up straight and all the good stuff. We know all the good stuff, but sometimes we need to remind ourselves that if we don't take care of our bodies, we actually risk ending up in a position where we cannot knit or crochet, which would be horrible. Believe you me, I've been there. Uh, this is not where you want to push through. This is where you want to acknowledge pain as a message from your body. With that, I am going to end things here. Thank you so much for watching. I am going to add a little bit of footage from our trip here to Mallorca because I don't have much to tell you. I haven't read anything. I haven't watched anything. We have just been hanging out here and all our 
old favorite spots and yeah, really been enjoying ourselves. So I am going to put some footage and I will see you hopefully again next week. Until then, keep knitting. So, baby, what are we doing here? Waiting. Waiting? You're not knitting cute. You want me to cast on something for you? No, thank you. Makes it so much more bearable to sit Yeah, away. just enjoy that you're knitting. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're still hoping to be able to go to Mallorca today. So, keeping our fingers crossed or, or not, because it's difficult to knit with crossed fingers. Oh, did we make it? We made it. Was that thanks to me? No. No thanks, no, no, thanks, no thanks to you. But we made it. You make me feel Back in 2016, Peter and I actually used to live here in Mallorca. And while Peter's been back many times since, I haven't really been here since 2018. So I was looking forward to this trip down memory lane to get a chance to revisit some of the places that holds so many beautiful memories for us. So we walked from Calabona to Calamillor, we uh, hung out around Cayamel, Cap de Pera, Calaratiara, which is where we used to spend our time back then. And it was absolutely lovely. In the evenings, of course, we'd go out. We would, well, actually, we ended up three out of four nights going to the same restaurant in Calaratara, the one called Corona. It is amazing. sharing values about it. natural fibers and about natural colors and trying to to also consume clothes and fashion in a different world, way also oh, yeah. making ourselves beautiful things so yeah well this is definitely the space to be inspired it's <laughs> so beautiful yeah there pieces that are hand painted by me and hand dyed and in the studio some in Bali Mosan and then now I have a pop-up of Winning Line which is down there and it's a brand um, that um, uses natural dyes and they do with, they dye with artisan in Bali. Strange color I dive in you when summer
you're there.